Last season, the Dolphins had a top 10 defense and made the playoffs despite Tua's injury woes. However, we enter 2023 still asking ourselves, is he our guy? Is he the franchise quarterback? Well, let's go ahead and discuss. And what's crackalacking is your boy bro schmo just in case you did not know so go ahead become bro and subscribe leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below let's have that nice beautiful football discourses today we talk about my favorite team fins up baby the miami dolphins we're gonna go over the coaching staff the scheme the roster we're gonna ask ourselves is tua worth moving forward with and at the end of the video so stick with me i'm going to give you my prediction for the dolphins in 2023 so without further ado let's go ahead and get in as we start with the coaching staff looking at this we add vic fangio being the big piece we added this offseason to assist with the defense now admittedly i didn't think josh boyer was a bad dc uh, some people may disagree with me with that is what it is Vic Fangio though like for a large part has influenced a lot of the league defensively he's a bit of the Kyle Shanahan as he was known with those uh I, I guess the the Bears mainly the Niners defense that Ben don't break mentality when these passers just entered the league when Mahomes started to get hot uh of just like I right, give them underneath and we're just not going to let them beat us deep. And the league has kind of, well, they've kind of adjusted to that, right? Where they'll they'll nickel and dime down the field if they need to. It's led to uh, just insane, like the, the Russian production really has. I think last year was the highest year in terms of yards per carry. So the Ben don't bring mentality while, yeah, I get it. It's fine. Does it still work? But with Vic Fangio, he has shown the ability to adapt. He isn't just this like multi-front. Uh, we I got him listed here as a split safety guy, a guy that really likes to uh, mess around with his safeties, leave you guessing who's going to be in the box coming downhill. Uh, and it's not always this off zone quarters defense which quarters you could get into a whole mess of stuff with there's there's a lot going on a lot of different ways to run it you got like match quarters and such but uh actually the franchise guy he did a whole video on vic fangio's scheme and how the guys that have implemented it for their rec respective teams uh haven't done it it has, hasn't done it well but Vic Fangio where he has adapted is he has looked at his rosters in the past and been like all right well in terms of personnel I think it's better if we play maybe like a press man we saw that in Denver with like when they got Patrick Sertan like an ability to adapt though I would say some of the horses he has here in Miami will probably enable a lot of what he wants to do as like X Xavier um, Howard. He he's actually his best year in the league came in a zone heavy defense, grabbing a uh, Jalen Ramsey who's this very versatile threat where he could play uh, inside out. He could even play deep for if you want him to. Unfortunately, as we'll get to the defense, uh, we won't see him until December. So Merry Christmas to y'all Dolphins fans. Uh, but I am equal parts excited and intrigued to see what Vic Fangio does for our defense. That was kind of the biggest addition we made in the offseason outside of Jalen Ramsey, I guess. Uh, but again, we, we won't see him until December. But Mike McDaniel coming in a year two with the Dolphins, he was he was the guy I wanted. I was saying this all last offseason, uh, well, I guess two offseasons ago, not this past one, that I wanted Mike McDaniels. I wanted to run the Shanahan wide zone blocking scheme that just works so well for quarterbacks. And I, honestly, I think we saw that with Tua where they really, it's so quarterback friendly and it enables you to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers relatively quickly and allow them to make plays and make moves. And I use a lot of motion, a lot of play action. It loves speed. And we'll get to that when we get to the running back core. And uh, some of the guys he brought on last season and so, uh, the addition he made through the draft this past year. But 
I loved it. He was my top hire, and he did not disappoint, man. I thought Mike McDaniel did a hell of a job. Uh, I mentioned he runs that Kyle Shanahan wide zone because uh, he was formerly the OC and run game coordinator there in San Francisco. Under him is Frank Smith, but it is Mike McDaniel calling the plays, but Frank Smith brings a good bit of experience with him as he was the run game coordinator for the Chargers a couple of years ago, uh, as well as like the old line coach. He has experience being a tight ends coach with the Raiders and the Bears, but all intent for intents and purposes is it's Mike McDaniel's offense. And I couldn't be more thrilled to a, you gotta stay healthy, bro. I wanna get, uh, well, I guess we could go ahead and get into the offense, but like my biggest questions here, obviously aside from the two a question is, what does the learning curve look like for this defense? And I really don't think there's going to be much of one, to be fair. some of the, I think some of the parts, act in, mainly in the secondary, did a fairly solid job uh, or is it, are a good scheme fit and will do a fairly solid job in this defense. And it's not like this is a defense that just doesn't blitz either. He's kind of middle of the road, middle of the pack. I think 25% is about his blitz rate, which that's another big reason why I love like the addition of like a David Long, who is just a phenomenal athlete, especially if you get him uh, going after the passer. But I'm very excited for year two with Mike McDaniel. And I'm very intrigued to see what Fangio brings to us. Before we get to the offense, before we talk about Tua at great length, I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is currently one of the most premier fantasy betting apps and they got a best ball tournament with 15 million dollars in cash prizes so if you sign up at underdog fantasy using promo code bro schmo they will match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars remember use promo code bro schmo when you sign up and they will match that first deposit up to a hundred dollars we are in the thick of a fantasy draft season and the best place to do it is underdog fantasy so go ahead use my promo code have them match that hundred dollar he dues and go out and win some money but as always bet responsibly my friends let's talk about Tua. let's talk about the starters on this offense as i do have them listed as a top 10 unit as they were top 10 last season and this this is the question can Tua stay healthy because if you remember coming to alabama he had that that hip injury it was a very severe one. It was one that actually forced Bo Jackson to retire back in the day. Obviously, technology. We have come a long way since then. But still, it was something to be concerned about and concerned over. And then we now we see the concussions with him. Last season was a like unfortunately played a big part in certain games last year like the green bay game a lot of people don't find his fair evaluation because they don't think he was a hundo percent which i i do believe that that's a fair qualm to have uh he suffered the the first i believe the concussion in the bills game or at least it was it was kind of up in the air and then he has the short week because it was thursday night where they faced cincinnati because I remember watching this game. I just traded for two on my fantasy team. And he has that just scary hit. You see the fingers like just go all like crooked. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, is he okay? Will he be all right? He comes back a few weeks later. And honestly, he looked like the, for all intents and purposes, he a large part of the season, he looked extremely solid. He really, really did. He is he is, he really pays dividends in this offense that you don't have to be a guy with the strongest arm because there's always those jokes out there about Tua's arm strength. And to be fair, I mean, I get it. He doesn't have an elite arm. He doesn't. I I, I think his arm's like middle of the road. It's fine enough for the NFL. I don't have a problem with it, but it really expects you to be a felicita felicitator, felicitor. Words are difficult. It expects him to basically play point guard in this offense for him to get the ball distributed uh, accurately and just put his 
pass catchers, playmakers in positions to create after the catch. And that wasn't always the case last season. Like we saw his most success downfield last year as he had like seven time, big time throws to only five turnover worthy plays. Uh, I think he only took about 60 attempts to, uh, downfield last season, which I mean, uh, that's fine. Uh, not every, every ball, not every pass is going to be a bomb, but you do see where he struggled was that mid, uh, even, I was going to say middle of the field, but even sometimes uh, outside, like towards the sideline uh, area inside the intermediate to short. So we're talking from like the line of scrimmage to about 19 yards down the field. He really did struggle where he only had one big time throw to 11 turnover worthy plays. And you kind of saw this in bits and pieces. And I hate referencing, again, the Green Bay game because it, it, it was heavily thought that he was, again, hurt if not concuss uh but where he just didn't read the defense he was just throwing to a spot he expected his receiver to be and he threw into double coverage and it was I, I assume it was an option route with i can't remember if it was like waddle or if it, if it was um like a like sheffield who was the receiver there who i guess he had the option of taking a like a quick little hitch or slanting inside on like a quick little like five yarder and he went with the slant instead two up through the hitch expecting that and it's like okay you can't just throw two spots it's like yeah sometimes you gotta throw your guys open and whatnot but at the same time you gotta be able to read and evaluate the field effectively or else it's gonna turn to turnovers it really is i mean in that game what he had yeah <laughs> Again, I, I, I know I'm going to get criticized for referencing the Green Bay game, but kind of have to. Three interceptions, four turnover worthy plays. But it's like we, we, we've seen we've seen these big games where like his first game back against Pittsburgh, he had three turnover worthy plays. And OK, granted, he was coming back. He started the season not exactly that hot against New England. But then he had that huge game against Baltimore where he had six tutties, 78 percent adjusted completion percentage extremely solid if you're not familiar just completion percentage basically takes out throwaways spikes uh drops by the receiver so you get the most accurate reading of how accurate your quarterback is so with two up health like health is always going to be the the biggest question like can he stay healthy and then yes he can be our franchise guy does he do enough in the passing game? Can he be that distributor in, in the intermediate of the field where that's where a majority of passes are going to happen? Can he do that effectively? Can he be more effective at it than he was last season? That's kind of my biggest question. And I think that's really going to be kind of the litmus test. Uh, but I mean, the dude's got the horses. He's got the playmakers to do it. He really, really does. He is in the right offense to do it. Like I, I'm telling you, like, I really love Tua. I get, I get it from the side of the Tua truthers out there. Cause there's a lot of die hard, die hard Tua truthers. And there's a lot of anti Tua people. And I kind of fall in between. I'm still in the wait and see. I don't think we've really answered that question just yet. I don't think you could honestly say that you've we've we've answered if he is our guy or not because i mean it, it, from right now seemingly it could be a it's at least going to be a very talented quarterback class next season with at least two players being drake man caleb williams which likely we're not going to be in position for but there's going to be guys later on in that first round where we still have a first round pick next year right we still got one right <laughs> Let me just confirm this 2024 NFL draft picks. Da, 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 da. As of right now, the Dolphins. I don't know why I'm thinking we traded away. No, we got Bradley Chubb last year. Okay, yes. But we did forfeit our third. Hmm, I wonder what was that from? Can't recall off the top of my head is what it is but we do have that first round and there's gonna be guys like bo nicks uh michael Penix. a lot of people like but another guy with a scary injury history 
You always kind of kind of take that into account. Quentin Ewer, uh, Quinn Ewers, he could emerge. Uh, there, there's other names there as well. A lot of people like Riley Leonard from Duke. Uh, people like uh, uh, some people really like Michael Pratt from Tulane. Um, you, you got KJ Jefferson, who's just built different some people really like joe milton like alex from hail mary sports uh by the way we do a podcast together we do the draft bros podcast and i think we're having gonna have a power rankings video and a mock draft video this week two rounds we do two freaking rounds uh and by the way i'm gonna do my own uh top i think i'm gonna do a top 200 big board because i got i love giving y'all as many names as possible to keep an eye on uh out for this draft season i try to do a good job when it comes to the draft at least giving y'all names like i'll give y'all my opinion but i'm just saying hey check these guys out this is how i feel about them feel different it is what it is like again i'm not i have my bad takes i have my good takes likewise with y'all like nobody has great takes even when it comes to this deep dive series like honestly maybe standing in the middle here like kind of like fence sitting the to a position is the wrong position maybe we should have pulled the plug last season maybe we maybe he is that guy and when right right before guys like justin herbert and now well i assume joe burrow who will eventually get his contract maybe we should have jumped a little earlier on that uh than we did so now he's gonna be super expensive we're gonna keep him he's gonna come out and just have this banger year i don't know man i don't know it's gonna be very interesting but like i said he has the horses he has probably in my opinion and not just because i'm a dolphins fan i think this is the the best wide receiver duo in the nfl like i think uh you can make a case for guys like uh jamar chase t higgins uh you can make a case for uh aj brown Devontae smith I think those are fair, but Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle are freaking phenomenal. They are speed, 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 speed. Oh, by the way, uh, did I mention speed? Guys that can create after the catch. They were very phenomenal at that. I believe Tyree Kill had 12 force missed tackles last season, and then uh, Jalen Waddle had seven. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, just group there that Tua will be gifted with. We're going to get to see what Durham Smythe can do as a as our top tight end, I guess. Uh, it, it's it's going to be interesting. I'll say that uh, I don't have a ton of faith that he's more than like a maybe a tight end, too. Uh, but at least he, he's a solid blocker, especially for this type of blocking scheme where you could get him and move, uh, just get him moving uh, and he, he's a plus receiver come in you better be at sub 250 you better be a solid enough receiver so uh, is he is he essentially is he an upgrade over mike gasicki i don't think so maybe in terms of a bl being a blocker gasicki we we know what gasicki was he was a very good receiving tight end i don't know i don't think Smythe is on that level uh, the slot slot's going to be an interesting race, so to speak here, as I list the starter as Cedric Wilson simply because we gave that man money. We gave him money. But currently, our lads has uh, Braxton Berrios listed, who we got from the Jets. I mean, we also brought, a, brought Mike White as the backup quarterback, which is nice. He was one of the better backups last season. And we really could need it. I mean, we, we had, unfortunately, Teddy got hurt. We had Skylar Thompson out there playing quarterback before he was ready. I mean, there, were, there was a week where it was like, oh, Skylar Thompson, eh, he's the quarterback of the future. I'm just like, just stop. Just stop. But, yeah, I like the addition of Mike White. Uh, but yeah, Barrios, we got Cedric Benson. We have uh, Freddie Swain, who mainly was in Seattle, was there in Denver a little bit uh, prior to coming to the Dolphins. So he's definitely going to be uh, maybe, I mean, he brings special teams experience. Like said, this is the thing, Cedric Wilson, I think his job's kind of up for grabs here because I think we're going to keep uh, Craycraft, good special teamer robbie chose did he change his last name to chosen robbie chosen i thought it was chosen anderson 
Robbie Anderson. Uh, he's just another speedster, a guy that could tear the top off of a defense. Hasn't really been, wasn't that good with Arizona last season. Actually, he was a big detriment to the team. But we'll see what he can bring to Miami. Can he be that speedster? Can he rekindle some of the high play we saw at uh, in Carolina? Uh, Eric Azukama, I wasn't that high on. I didn't think he was a phenomenal athlete. I thought he moved well enough for his size, but he was someone that could create after the catch. Therefore, someone who could definitely operate in this offense, uh, similar to like we see with Juwan Jennings with the 49ers. I wouldn't put him on that level. I absolutely loved Juwan Jennings coming out. Uh, and Azukama did not give me that same uh, Russell and the Jimmies, so to speak. And there's really no one else really to speak of. A couple of UDFAs that I don't think make the team. We have Braylon Sanders, who was out of Ole Miss a year ago as a UDFA. He's probably not going to make a roster spot. Like, I think you make a case like Eric Azukum, uh, as a as a gamma. Nailed it. I didn't. Uh, is probably going to compete for that slot spot. Or at least backup slot spot. So... I may have listed Cedric Wilson as the starter. Not exactly. Um, it's not a given. Uh, the Dolphins really have nothing at a tight end. Sorry, not sorry. Eric Saubert. Honestly, couldn't tell you much about him. Tanner Connor was another guy who was a former receiver turned tight end coming out of, I think it was Idaho State. Uh, I actually really liked him as a late day three uh, player. Uh, he ends up being a UDFA, but we're now doing the same thing with Elijah Higgins, who is someone we, rather than Tanner Connor, who was a UDFA, Elijah Higgins, we invested a six round pick in, but I, I, I dare say that he might be more physically and athletically gifted than Tanner Connor. Uh, we got Tyler Croft. Can't be, can't be the same Tyler it yeah, can't be. No way. Oh, you're kidding me. I didn't even know we had Tyler Croft on the squad. Well, shoot. He's, he's probably liable to make the team then. Although oh, they list him as tight end five here. That's kind of wild. That'll be interesting. But uh, we got we got running backs too. Like the, the speed don't stop. You like speed? You got the need for speed? Well, let's check out these running backs on offense. As Raheem Mostert, I'm going to list as the starter. Like, I kind of wanted to go with Jeff Wilson because I'm a big Jeff Wilson guy. But Raheem Mostert, probably the... He was, he was definitely... When Jeff Wilson joined the squad, they kind of split time a little bit. You didn't really know who... They kind of just went with the hot hand mentality. But it was Mostert who ended up getting more volume slightly. Honestly, you could say either or here. Both are former guys that were revitalized in, well, I guess more so for Raheem Mostert, but uh, were just very good in Mike Mc, in the Shanahan scheme. They're under Mike McDaniels and, or Mike McDaniel. So Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, they come with that experience. It was not shocking to me that we ended up going with Devon A-Chain in the third. I didn't want us to get another run back just because this system has proven you don't need to invest largely in running back. Jeff Wilson was a UDFA. Raheem Mostert was a journeyman at this point, had been stops in like Cleveland and such. And whenever the Niners actually invest early, in a running back typically it's the it, typically it's the journeyman or the later round picks that they have less investment in that end up like taking the reins like elijah mitchell you remember they they took trey Ma, uh trey sermon and now he's kind of everywhere in the league like not in a good way he's just bouncing around squads but elijah mitchell ended up being that guy uh they took the LSU running back last year, though we didn't see a grip of him last season as they made the move for Christian McCaffrey, but still they have Elijah Mitchell there. So it's like, okay, hopefully since we invested a day two pick in him, 
that we see a good deal. Like luckily, like Devon A chain, like if there was a fit for this system, it was A chain. I think he's got solid enough vision. He's got speed for days, but he also plays despite his size with a lot of effort and doesn't shy away from physicality go watch the texas a&m lsu game he just dominated and he was hard to bring down so a chain he also brings good receiving chops good return ability uh who do they keep in terms of uh running back uh four i think is a fair question as well i want to look up because they got Chris Brooks, who I liked coming out of, I want to say it was the Hula Bowl, but it could have been the NFL PA uh, Bowl at a BYU. I also want to see how he tested. But Miles Gaskin, they also got Salvan Ahmed, uh, who've been with the squad for like prior to McDaniel. I don't know if uh, they, they will be guys that end up being kept. Uh, that's why I kind of want to look at Chris Brooks real quick because I actually really liked him. Uh, he ended up being running back 31 for me last year because he he's coming in at six foot 232, so he's got size to him. It was in fact the Hula Bowl, uh, and it ends up running a four five eight, which at that size is extremely solid. Uh, his his he was surprisingly nimble in the agility drills, the three count and the short shuttle. And my notes here from from uh, the hula bowl practices is throughout the week or throughout the week and in the game brooks just showed off great vision really good patience i was very impressed with that which if you if you're unfamiliar with the mike mcdaniel's scheme it really relies on the vision of ball carriers because typically you're going to get three to four different options of okay where is the whole development is this something i continue to take to the outside or do i like plant my foot charge up field do i cut it back in like it, it really requires good vision so like long shot to make the team but kind of the dark horse to be running back four here i would say chris brooks uh so yeah we'll see with that because again like my gaskin ahmed the, those guys are kind of like they're just they're camp bodies at this point they really are uh, and i don't think they bring much more than that let's go ahead and take a look at the offensive line as you can see i have listed isaiah win as a left guard our lads they have liam eichenberg liam eichenberg's been terrible just has i didn't like the pick at the time and then they threw that guy week one left tackle against the Patriots and he got annihilated. Moving him back into guard because, yeah, the dude projected as a guard in the NFL. What are we doing here putting him out at tackle? And he just hasn't been very good. I would argue that he was outplayed last season uh, after he went down with injury. He was outplayed by Robert Jones, who was this developmental guy we got as a UDFA out of Middle Tennessee. Like, I actually really like Joe, Robert Jones, and it looks like he's probably going to be the backup to Robert Hunt, which Robert Hunt was phenomenal last year. One of our best picks. He came in, the, actually, he came a year before Liam Eichenberg, I believe. But yeah, I think Isaiah Wynn, a guy that can play tackle. We saw him play tackle majority of the time there in New England and if things don't go well with austin jackson who it seems like that guy's been developing for who knows how long since we got him in 2020 that was the thing man that 2020 draft was definitely interesting like he started off the like year very nice as a pass protector against uh new england but he got hurt very early in that game but like you, you were like, oh man, okay, maybe he, uh, may, maybe he's kind of turned a corner, at least as a pass protector. And then he against Houston, a team that like what the, Jerry Hughes, and that was about it. He got annihilated when he came back, allowed six pressures. Like I remember Tua getting destroyed that game. This is when I think Taron Armstead was hurt, and we also had Greg Little out there. Uh, I think this was 
Maybe even Brandon Shell was in that game. Brandon Shell was solid enough pass protector for us. It's just in the run game he didn't do do or offer a much. So if Liam Eichenberg ends up being the guard, left guard, big trouble. Uh, Austin Jackson kind of on his last legs here. We'll see. We'll see. Go into the depth, and I think there's quality depth there if may if the left guard or the right tackle position don't go as planned but as always you do know Taron Armstead said went on the field one of the best tackles in football thing is he's always going to miss games every year like last season what he missed four games last season so you know he's just going to miss time this man can't have a healthy season to save his life uh we have and like we're looking at the tackle depth and Jerron Christian's actually I think a solid enough backup He's good depth. You don't really see time last season with, uh, I think it was Kansas City. But the year prior, he was with the Texans. And he had to step up uh, when Laramie Tunzel got banned up. And I thought he did a solid enough job. So I think he's a good enough backup there. We also have Isaiah Wynn, who has the flexibility to play tackle. Because, I mean, he, the, the dude played tackle basically his whole career there in new england or at least on his whole rookie deal kendall lamb honestly didn't look half bad when he had to come in for us i believe he only had like 30 snaps last year right and look at this lamb 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 kendall where are you uh yeah 32 snaps but put put out a solid performance uh, there at left tackle last season for us, and that was against uh, the Patriots in one of the final weeks of the season. So and, and that that that's a top ten defense against New England. So he did a solid enough job. So I'm feeling actually pretty decent at the tackle position. But I I would go Isaiah Win if he's not playing left guard. Then I'd go Christian and Lamb. They he did draft Ryan Haynes. I apparently hate michigan tackles started with jalen mayfield i didn't like him i thought he was a day three developmental guy ends up kind of being the case they move him into guard which i already kind of assumed the league would do that and never played well i didn't like uh who was the other cat that followed uh andrew stuber i think i wasn't a big fan of his he ends up going late day three uh, somewhere I can't recall where and Ryan Hayes you remember him in the senior bowl you remember him getting molly whopped by uh, Isaiah Fosky so I don't want to see him start at all if he if he if he is seeing snaps we're in trouble uh, they got Cedric um, Cedric O I'm just gonna call him that uh, as another backup option another guy that's kind of a journeyman at this point I pointed to robert jones as very good depth i would put him behind liam eichenberg in the depth chart maybe eichenberg like steps up and looks good this year but i think jones just is more athletically gifted in a in, in a sit and from a physical standpoint i think he's stronger like liam eichenberg it was like ah uh, he's not like the strongest guy he's not the fastest guy he's just technically sound i think jones kind of just beats him in, from a physical perspective so i i would put him or i would put him over uh eichenberg but we got isaiah win here who i kind of hope gets that left guard spot uh looking at center connor williams played exceptionally well if you remember this cat uh was it out of wisconsin or texas i can't remember he was initially a tackle yeah there we go tackle coming out of texas moves to guard for the cowboys uh and then comes here and moves to center and played very spectacular like uh, when Hunt, Williams, and Armstead are on the field, you're feeling really, really good. It's those left tackle, right, left guard, right tackle spots that I'm really huh, about, and I'll be interested to see how it plays out. All in all, though, they have the burners, they have the playmakers. The offensive line, I feel really good about three of the five spots, and I feel a lot better if Isaiah Wynn was some way, somehow, a part of that starting lineup. So as long as Tua can stay healthy, uh, which is what I put here. Stay healthy, Tua. Hopefully that answers our questions. Is he is he so is he the franchise or is he not? 
but I think this team's going to be hovering around that top 10 to top 12 range when it comes to offensively. They also, I didn't even mention uh, Alec and Gold, kind of our Kyle Juice check, so to speak, at the fullback position. But moving to the defense, I list them as a top 10 unit. Without Jalen Ramsey, they're probably more like 12 to 15. Because if you didn't know Jalen Ramsey, out until December. Kind of sucks. The, like I put it right here, Ramsey injury hurts. Quite literally, it does. But but now we're going to be asking, okay, who is corner two across of Xavier and Howard? I kind of mentioned Howard's best year came in a more zone-heavy scheme. And he's been playing more man coverage the last few seasons under Boyer, under Brian Flores. And now he moves back to a system I imagine is going to play a lot of zone. Noah Igbig Nagani or Cam Smith. Those are the two guys we're kind of looking at. And I like Cam Smith. I like the feistiness he plays with. He's a cat that I think can play impress if you really if you want him to, just because he plays with. He, he, I love the physicality he plays with. I just really do. He will get after it at the catch point. That's why we saw with uh, him at South Carolina, just the ball skills, the ball production, and when it came to uh, even when receivers came down with the football, uh, he was always throwing that peanut punch man he was all he, he if you caught the ball on him it was well earned because he would have his grill all up in the catch point so like i'm kind of my favorite to like win with the cornerback two job while we wait for ramsey to get healthy would be cam smith i think he's got some inside and outside flexibility you can kind of say the same thing about noig big nagani just to a lesser degree uh because unlike cam smith who is unproven uh knowing big nagani we've gotten a chance to see him and it hasn't all at all been wonderful i still think he's exceptionally raw from a technical standpoint a guy that doesn't exactly excuse me exactly know how to use his hands and he's gifted with a very good very good athleticism he just has not emerged for us and he's probably another guy we won't retain after the season so Tua right now kind of looking like those three first round picks we had in 2020 Tua's hopefully looks like the one that will pan out as well, i austin jackson i don't know i don't know if he will and knowing big nagani i think he's just on the way out uh they pick up eli apple who to be fair at his best he's a he's a he's another corner that likes to get into the grill of pass catchers so uh someone who i actually kind of like maybe a bit better in a more man heavy scheme but having that flexibility is is super nice Jalen ramsey once he returns uh, it's gonna be freaking phenomenal uh we have cater coho who came out of nowhere last season played as well as a udfa could play uh he he was coming out of texas a m commerce so not even not texas a m but texas a m commerce it's like a d3 school played at the i want to say it was the hula bowl and uh apparently like did enough for him to be a camp body made the most of it came out and yeah it, like the it, i wouldn't say like i wouldn't say he's a top 10 slot corner like this guy i think firmly probably is a slot only that can play outside if you need him to in a pinch but he for for what we invested in him which was close to nothing i think in year two like yeah i feel good about that nick need uh need him he has always been very good for us when he has stepped up or needed to step up someone that has shown inside and outside flexibility let me pull this down a little bit uh so i'm excited about that trill williams still on the squad pro i don't know how much longer he can stay on the practice squad but he was initially out of syracuse i really liked him as a potential slot player so don't know don't think he makes a squad but just a great guy to have couldn't tell you much about bryson thompson uh the other depth we have at corner is just uninspiring justin bethel more of a special teamer at this point mark gilbert was an interesting one we had coming out of duke that had a lot of injury concerns i think he's related to daryl revis in some way i can't remember 
uh we have a very good very good safety group we really really do uh, javon holland who burst on the scene looked like he was going to be one of the top safeties at the position and not to say he didn't fulfill that last season but i think it's like oh no okay he's definitely a top 20 guy don't know if he's exactly a top 10 for the position he's kind of fringe for me but someone who can play in the slot can maybe not necessarily like consistently play in the box uh but a cat that has played extremely well for us brandon jones someone who has that athleticism to him that can do both uh play in the box and play uh playing coverage uh however very similar to like Caden Stearns who I talked about in the Denver deep dive that uh, he wasn't exactly the most disciplined player with his eyes and would sometimes he would he would sometimes just he would be sometimes be a blown coverage way to happen though i thought brandon jones did a much better job at alleviating that he only played about 350 snaps last season so he's looking where he's looking to get a big uh increase in volume in terms of snaps though uh, you can make a case for deshaun elliott who's a journeyman at this point but a solid box safety of road mckinley's more of a deep option so if we're seeing more of these cover ones where they go into like go into a uh press man coverage then i'm not saying these guys necessarily make it on the field but they have they have roles fit for them uh keandrin smith udfa out of kentucky uh he's making the move from corner to safety so that'll be interesting I'll, I got my eyes watching Miles Dorn, former North Carolina uh, safety, long, very big long shot to make the squad. But yeah, the secondary is going to be probably for me the most interesting thing to see how this all works. Can Xavier Howard can X uh, rekindle some of the magic he's done in the past? Because I think outside of that he's been he's been all right, but he's not a corner one in my opinion. Uh, the front seven, though, I am exceptionally excited for. Starting with the linebackers, we got Jerome Baker, who is just an athletic freak. He really is a guy that probably could kick and play safety if you want him to, but has been a missed tackle machine. He's just, again, very athletic for the position, but doesn't necessarily play with the physicality necessary uh, to consistently play, play in the box. Like The missed tackle rate was fine enough. Uh, David Lawn, I'm extremely excited about. I really, really am. He was wonderful last season in Tennessee. Let's go ahead and pull up uh, his, what he did actually from an analytical standpoint because I bring up the pass rushing aspect of him, right? And he had 18 pressures last season, and that was only on 47 pass rushing snaps. Uh, he did a solid enough job in coverage. I would say he is undersized and the missed tackles will probably be a thing with him. But I thought it was a good addition. I was surprised that a guy like Bobby Okereke got more money than David Long. Regardless, big, big uh, addition at a very good price for the dolphins looking at the depth there they have at the linebacker spot as we did draft shannon tindall uh, about a year ago out of georgia who very good north south athlete who can be explosive explosive he's got good length but not well put together yet as a coverage player and at least as a coverage instincts so it'll be nice to see what he does in year two wasn't really called on a ton in year one and i think he actually had uh he didn't make it to triple digit sack there's i said sacks triple digit snaps so to speak so let me pull this up Yeah, yeah, he only had 10 snaps last season. Uh, Duke Riley, more of a body at this point, and someone I could, like, journeyman, reliable vet for some. 
I think between Aubrey Miller, who they picked up at Jacksonville, or Mike Rose, who was formerly an Iowa State uh, linebacker a year ago as a UDFA, could end up jumping up in the depth chart. Uh, Aubrey Miller is definitely someone to watch out for at Jackson State. More of a thumper, and we don't really have that. A linebacker. We don't have that guy that can come up and play the run game as a thumper. And it's not like it's not just we don't have that guy. We don't have anyone with the size to be that guy though. Chan Tindall, what are you what are you at right now? Because I remember Tindall being at that like close to that 240. He's at 236. Which is fine. You you play the run well at that at that uh weight. Uh the pass rush is gonna be bonkers. Like I said, uh with the coaching Fangio, oh, there we go, defense. Fangio kind of, uh, he's a middle of the road when it comes to his blitz rate. And David Long is going to be that guy, but we have the horses to get it done by ourselves. As Bradley Chubb, who is familiar with Fick Fangio's defense, he played under Fick Fangio when he was the head coach over at Denver. So hopefully like chubb can stay healthy like we've seen when he could stay healthy he can be exceptionally good uh it's just looking for that consistency i mean we ended up giving her a first rounder which kind of felt like a bit much uh we have jalen phillips there who we spent a first rounder on in the same draft as a javon holland and he is just like he i mean he's basically broken out right last year 77 pressures is just an insane number he is so freaking effective as a pass rusher uh can he be a bit more consistent or a bit more of a finisher as a run blocker or a run defender ah, i don't know we'll see but phillips is just a phenomenal phenomenal pickup there by the dolphins who uh really he, he was someone that was initially at usc had a, I think they forced him to medically retire because of concussions, but he still wanted to play football, goes to the University of Miami and just tears it up for a year. And so that was kind of the question. It was like, okay, medically, will he be okay? Will he be good to go? Uh, Andrew Van Gink, Grink, uh, Ginkle has been a very solid rotation player there on the edge. Uh, only had 11 pressures and a sack last year, but his run defense is exceptionally well. Malik Reed. Another guy that's more of a rotation player. He he's familiar with Vic Fangio from dating back to Denver. I like that. Uh, what what else do we have here? Oh, I mean, okay. There's gonna be an interesting like if we hold on to five edges, which we probably will. I think Cameron Good, which here uh, here I, I need to move move over here so y'all see who I'm talking about. I think Cameron Good probably has the edge over like uh, the UDFAs like Mitchell Good and uh, Garrett Nelson. I think he, I think Good has the edge as he he's he's the one with the most special team experience. Like he was kind of an undersized hybrid linebacker at the University of California and he, I think he fits that role well. He does bring that special teams ability. So I like that. Like I think he probably gets the edge over Agud, Agud and um, Nelson. Uh, going to the interior, man. I feel really good about this interior. Uh, Christian Wilkins, probably. From I really underrated Christian Wilkins. Like when we drafted him, I didn't hate the pick. It just wasn't the sexiest pick when we took him in 2019. And. Uh, I think I remember saying that, yeah, it's not the sexiest pick and he's someone that's just going to be exceptionally solid. And I kind of saw him as a high floor player. That floor apparently was a lot higher than I could anticipate as he's been exceptionally solid for the Dolphins. Great run defender. He's shown a bit of a pass rush upside. I love just how he gets after it. Uh, we also have Zach Siler, who has been very solid for the Dolphins, played over 900 snaps last season, and I expect him to do so once again. Uh, so I, I like that pairing on the interior. You throw Ra Raquan uh, Davis into the mix there, who, where are you at size-wise now? Like, I want to say 330, 325. 
30 25 but he, he can come in there and be the like the nose tackle if we want him to be uh someone who could wear a few different hats on the interior uh when he was coming out of alabama uh and we, we still got emmanuel ogba who was solid for us last season he played uh only in nine games so he's hurt for half of the year but 15 pressures sack this guy that could play that like four eye tech so yeah that's good that's solid enough uh couldn't tell you much about josiah bronson jalen twyman i didn't like coming out of pittsburgh thought he was just an undersized interior player and that's kind of what he was went to i think he was at, initially drafted at minnesota uh now he's been with the squad here but if we can improve upon him i hope we do uh we got brandon what was it peely Pele uh out of USC another guy that's just I think more of a nose uh at 319 uh that's kind of where he played there at USC uh Randy Charlton sounds familiar uh yeah I was gonna say Mississippi State I didn't get to watch him last season but uh 275 man a little flexibility playing maybe uh like a 3-4 end or even like uh an edge player or edge defender a guy that can set the edge uh on running downs but yeah no nah, man i like uh, siler davis wilkins that's those are the guys with a little bit of agba so i i love this front seven i really do i love what i would have loved this defense a whole lot more if we got healthy jalen ramsey for most of the season but it's it's gonna be interesting who steps up at cornerback too my money's on cam smith the guy we used our first pick on not our first round pick but our first pick remember we use that first pick on bradley chubb but we have some guys that are actually very that are familiar with big fangio and malik reed and bradley chubb so there's some excitement to be had here that the learning curve is not going to be big not going to be huge uh x a guy that his best year came from a more zone heavy defense so but it's big fan joe he's shown the ability to adapt i don't think we're strictly going to be an off coverage off zone coverage team that he might incorporate some press man if uh if it calls for it unlike some of the i guess you would say his other his other disciples uh like uh ed donatel uh I guess with joe woods technically so I don't know. I'm excited about the Dolphins. But it's time we get to their prediction. As I think the current odds win total for the Miami Dolphins is eight and a half. And I would be smashing the over on this. I think the Dolphins will get more than eight wins. I think they'll get nine to ten. Matter of fact, my prediction for the Dolphins. Let's just go ahead and show it. It is 10 wins. I got them going at 10 and 7. And I know some Dolphins fans are going to be like, yo, why are you lowballing us? I have I have projected us to have the second hardest schedule in the NFL. It's where I have our strength of schedule. Matter of fact, it goes Patriots, hardest schedule in the league, Dolphins, and then the Bills. So, and then I think the Jets are like a wee bit further actually i could check where i have the jets real quick move that over here so y'all don't see uh my other see my other uh record predictions for the rest of the nfl all right so i got patriots dolphins then the bills one two and three jets are at number seven so afc east it's gonna be a tough road it's gonna be a tough road Matter of fact, I have Raiders at four. I'll just go ahead and say this. And the Chiefs have the fifth hardest schedule. So the AFC, the AFC is a tough road. Everyone knows it's going to be a tough division. I have us uh, four and five against teams that I had making the playoffs. Five and five against winning teams. Five and two against losing teams. So playing well against losing, uh, losing teams. Um, but it's a tough road ahead i think i have the dolphins conference rank eight 
they literally just they're they're on the outside looking in it's gonna it's a tough road but let's go with the game by game just because again with the Jalen ramsey hit that's huge uh tua can he stay healthy how consistent will the play be there's a lot of questions i have the dolphins uh split in the division so i probably have them winning their home games in division and then losing the away games in division i don't know we'll see uh, as we go through this uh, we open with the Chargers. Chargers, very good squad. There's a lot of hype with Kellen Moore there. Uh, can he unlock Justin Herbert and have him actually attack downfield? We'll see. Uh, we'll see in my deep dive. Chargers will be actually a little later. Uh, also, keep in mind, when I do these deep dives, uh, it's like the franchise, franchise guy. He does deep dives, right? He does them by his power rankings. I don't do that. I do it by a draft order. So like uh, these next like three teams I have in my deep dive series, I don't think are a better team than the Dolphins. I would not put them ahead of the Dolphins in a power ranking. However, when it comes to like final predictions uh, and I do it in a draft order, they would be drafted later. And I, I kind of wrap this series up with a mock draft anyway. So it's like, yeah, don't get it confused. Don't get it twisted. I don't think, especially these next few teams, are better than the Miami Dolphins. It's just, this is a tough road head for us. Uh, we open with the Patriots. I'll sleep on the Patriots. I did my Patriots deep dive already, so you can go check that out. Uh, I got us beating the Denver Broncos, then losing to the... Uh, oh, hey, Gojo. Gojo doesn't feel good about... Uh, the Dolphins not making the playoffs. Oh, are you sad about the Dolphins not making the playoffs? Me too, Gojo. I said I'm saying it like like I'm talking into existence. I hope it doesn't happen. Oh wait. Oh, what is mommy home? There you want to sit? Sit, buddy. Daddy's almost done with the video. All right. So got us losing the Bills, but again, I kind of said I split the divisions three and three. Uh, got us losing to the to the Giants. So all these Giants fans coming out. Talk about how much I hate Daniel Jones. Look at that. I have y'all beating my Dolphins fins up. And I don't hate Daniel Jones. I'm just... I'm not into him as much as y'all are. And I say this as a guy that is not completely sold on to it yet. Uh, guys, being the Panthers. Uh, Eagles is going to be a tough one, especially in Philly. That kind of sucks. Uh, and right before our bye, we got to face the Chiefs. And we got to do it in Germany. Wunderbar. Coming out of the bye, we get a. I feel I don't. I feel like the Raiders aren't going to be that good of a team, so we're going to get. We get the Raiders, uh, Jets. Uh, we get Washington. They're coming off a mini bye, so to speak, but I don't think that makes much of a difference. Like the Dolphins are a vastly better team than the Commanders. Beating the Titans, uh, they go on this run at the end of the year where we beat the Ravens. Holy freaking moly! Beat the Cowboys. Like, look at this. Look at this. We have to like go on a run in the middle of the season because like our end of the year slate sucks. Like starting here with Tennessee. Don't sleep on the freaking Titans. I'm just saying that Mike Vrabel is a top 10 head coach in the league. They just added Devontae. Devontae being paired back up with Tim Kelly. Don't sleep on the Titans. I don't. Do believe Aaron or Aaron Rodgers is going to have a revenge season, and that Jets team is just another team with a very good defense. They got some playmakers. Another team that kind of uses the Shanahan offense. Dallas Cowboys, they're a good squad, at least until the playoffs start. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got Baltimore Ravens again. If Lamar is healthy, then it's going to be a problem. But, hey, I mean, we came back from, like, what, 28 points down last time? And then we end with the Bills. So it's, like, must win. I have the Dolphins winning out, uh, winning their final six games. Six-game win streak. But I think we we had a – didn't we have a six-game win streak last season? Uh, Dolphins 2022 schedule. All right, let's see this here. I, th I believe we had a stretch where where we had like won six or seven games. All right, so win win. So the Dolphins. So we got to the Bengals, or maybe it was the year prior. 
Uh, cause then we lost to the Vikings. We lost to the Jets. Beat the Steelers. Okay, no, no, no. Here it is. Here it is. Ah, no, we won like five. And then we ran into the buzzsaw that was the Niners and Brock Purdy. Lost to the Chargers last year. That was a close one. I remember that freaking Tyree kill. Fumble for a touchdown? Like, or he didn't fumble the ball. He recovered a fumble and took it for a touchdown after we fumbled it. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting. It, it'll be a fun ride. Fins up, my Dolphins fans. Uh, you let me know what you think about Tua. And I'm till the season I'm, starts, I'm gonna be this milk toast fence sitter is what it is but that's it for the video go ahead do the youtube thing and as always until next time you be easy my friends later